many people's idea of computer science is based off of a Hollywood movie. Some movies do paint an accurate picture, but some... Is that a go for launch? Yes. No, 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 What just happened? Armageddon, I'm afraid. And if that's not the case, many students pursue computer science because some relative tells them that this field has a lot of scope and if you get into computer science, you'll be making lakhs of rupees every month. Let me break it down for you. 1.5 million graduates in India don't get a job at all. Yes, this field has scope, but that scope is also very, very competitive. So if you want to get into computer science, you have to know for sure that this is what you want to do. But how do you know that? Well, let's find out. The first tell is you like to know how things work. As a kid, if you had a number of toys that were broken because you opened them to find out how they worked, you might have the mind of an engineer. Engineers always like to break apart things and find out how they work. That must be why I suck at relationships. Most fields in tech involve creating or building something, right? It could be a website, app, framework, or even a design of some sorts. But in order to create something, you need to know how to create it, right? Or you need to know how it works. And always feeling the need to know how is one of the traits of an engineer. And sometimes it even reaches an obsessive level. The second point, you like to solve puzzles. You are presented with a problem and are also given the resources to solve it. But how you solve it is entirely up to you. There could be a million ways to solve that problem, but you have to find an efficient one. It will take a lot of thinking, planning, and just trying and failing. So if you're someone who enjoys playing Sudoku, crossword, chess, or even games like these, you might have an advantage if you try coding. And the reason is your thought process. The way you approach a problem is very different compared to most people. When you're presented with a problem, your first action might be to understand it properly instead of just getting into it and trying to figure things out. And after understanding your problem, you'll break that problem down into a number of tasks and then solve one of those tasks at a time. All while making sure that you have not lost sight of your primary objective. That kind of thinking is extremely advantageous in coding and computer science in general. People think that to become a computer engineer, you have to be very good at maths. You'll have to perform some complex calculations and mind-boggling physics. And that is kind of true. It really depends on what side of computer science you get into. All sides of computer science will usually involve at least some level of basic high school math. What I mean by that is in fields like web development, you're only going to need basic addition and subtraction which you can even literally do in your sleep. But if you go into fields like machine learning and artificial intelligence, the math there will keep you up at night. It is very complex and it even involves some complicated logic. Yes, there are tools now that make the job much easier, but it is still very necessary. This is really not the case for 95% of computer engineering. So you don't have to be really good at math, but it helps if you're decent at it. The nature of technology is such that it is never going to be static, right? It will keep changing and updating itself. Which means that new jobs will be created, but at the same time, old ones will be wiped off. In order to avoid ending up in this category, you have to be ready to keep changing yourself as well. You'll have to be a student for life. You'll have to keep learning and exploring new things. This can be a deal breaker for some people because you spend the first 20 years of your life learning new things and now this random guy on YouTube is telling me to do it for my whole life but this random guy on YouTube is telling the truth. Understand this, back when computers were a new thing, assembly was everywhere. So assembly programmers were in huge demand. But now in modern computational systems, you'll rarely, if ever, see assembly being used. So the demand for assembly programmers has dropped, but at the same time, C++ programmers are in huge demand now. That's just how technology works. So maybe 10-15 years from now, the programming languages we are using today might become obsolete. So if you're not ready for this lifestyle, maybe computer science isn't for you. But if you are, keep watching. Coming to the last point, you don't give up. Coding is very frustrating sometimes. A big chunk of your time is going to be spent trying to solve bugs and errors. And sometimes you don't have the slightest idea of what is going wrong in your code. Hours, days, and even weeks can be spent trying to solve one error, only to realize that it was a silly logical error on your part. This is very demotivating sometimes, but it is essential, especially in times like these, 
that you don't give up. Every problem has a solution and it can only be found if you don't stop looking for it. But then again, if it's easy, what's the fun in doing it, right? A very simple thought, but very few people understand it. So these were some ways with which you can figure out if computer science is for you. Also, if you're still watching, do leave a comment down below saying I watched till the end. If you liked the video and found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so it'll keep pushing me to make videos for you guys. Anyways, that was it for today. So until next time, happy learning.